Uh, today on Free Field Training, we're going to talk about dealing with stinky, sweaty, nasty body armor. I get comments all the time from people about how to deal with stink on their body armor and whether this product or that product is good to just spray their armor down and get rid of the smell. All of the spray things that I've tried have all just kind of been band-aids. Like most things in life, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So uniforms, armor carriers, and ancillary systems like like moisture wicking vests, like this one from 221B, those all keep you from having this problem in the first place most of the time. At a certain point, your stuff's just gonna get nasty and sweaty because you're gonna be out doing something and it's gonna be strenuous and it's gonna sweat through all of your stuff. But if we can minimize the amount of work that we have to do, that's always a good thing for us. Armor carriers, if you can decide what you're gonna use, you want one with mesh on the back. Here's one from Safe Life Defense. It's got it's a soft armor carrier with mesh on the back. Here's one from Grey Ghost Gear. This is a hard plate carrier and it's got mesh on the back. What this is gonna do is it's gonna allow the sweat that comes through your uniform shirt to get into the mesh and then allow it to wick out from around the armor. Now the center of your armor is normally going to be a problem no matter what method you use. You're gonna get sweat up the center of your vest. One method to, to help with this wicking is to use modern fabrics for uniforms. And that's where we've really come a long way in the last five years. We've got lots of summer weight, modern fabric uniforms that look just like the old polyester or polycotton uniforms that now give us a lot more advantages of being able to wick that moisture away from our body, get it to that mesh on the vest, and then get it out of the atmosphere instead of stinking us up and us being soaked with sweat at the end of the day. Of course, none of these methods are 100% effective. You can have the mesh liner on a safe life or point blank or gray ghost gear vest or vest carrier. You can have under it a 221B Max Dry vest. And of course, all these things I'm showing, there's links down in the description. They were probably all sent to me. In fact, I think they all were sent to me at one point or another. If you use those links and the coupon codes down there, you help me out a little bit. But even if you buy all of this stuff, it doesn't matter. At some point, you're going to have end up with a stinky, nasty, swelly vest. Now, 15 years ago, people used to say you had to take all of the pouches off of the vest, take the whole thing apart in order to wash it, and you had to like mix up a bucket of detergent to wipe down the panels on the inside. And I, I'm not saying that there isn't somewhere armor out there where you still have to do that. I have just never found it. Uh, pouches on vests, you don't have to take the pouches off the vests in any pouches I've ever used. I think that's a holdover from the old Velcro and Snap pouches, but I haven't seen anybody using that uh, on the street in at least five years. I haven't seen one of those vests. I'm, I'm pretty sure no one makes them anymore. At least they shouldn't make them anymore. So that really shouldn't be an issue. Back in that day, the little metal snaps could, could rust and fall apart if you just threw them into the washer. But your modern pouches that are on vests are normally fine. So your method for washing off armor, once it starts getting stinky, is to take, if you have an external carrier, take your patches off of it. We'll talk about why this is important later. And then take everything out of the pouches and pockets that are on the carrier. That's your step one. You wanna do that first while the armor is still in it because it's gonna give you something to pull against in order to get that stuff off either easier instead of having a, a jumble of carrier with a bunch of stuff attached to it. Next, you want to take any elastic and Velcro, anything that you can get off the vest, off of it. And then you want to take the armor out when all you have is a carrier with pouches on the outside if you have pouches and blank Velcro if you have blank Velcro. If you have a concealable vest and a concealable carrier, you just skip right to the step. Take the armor out of the vest cover. There's three major methods that companies use to keep the armor in the carrier. And the big problem that I see with most people with figuring out how to get it out is that they don't know that you have to roll soft armor up kind of like a taco to get it out of there. As an example, in the Safe Life vest, we've got Velcro on the back. So this is a Velcro opening and then your armor panel is in here. But you notice the Velcro opening only goes to within two or three inches of the edges of the carrier. So you can't just open this up and easily slide the armor out. You have to roll the armor over on itself and then you can get it out of the carrier. And even then, it's gonna be a tight fit. 
Another attachment method in the back, sometimes you'll flip your armor over to the inside and you'll find a zipper. You just unzip it, same thing. Roll the armor, slide it out. Play carriers are normally a little easier. They're just gonna have, most of the time, some sort of flap at the bottom that you pull open and you pull your plate out of the bottom of the carrier. Sometimes you will run into, and this is a very small minority of circumstances, you'll run into armor where there is no Velcro or zipper closure. You're just gonna have a flap and the flaps overlap on top of each other. And all you have to do is pull those apart, roll the armor, and pull it out if it's soft armor. Once you get your armor out of the carrier, you might end up with two different things. Either you've got a concealable vest in an external carrier that has the concealable cover on it for suspension reasons. Some armor, you have to have it in the original suspension, and then you have a, a overt carrier that you put it into, in which case you're gonna to have to take that concealable carrier apart while it's inside your overt carrier, pull it out of the overt carrier, and then pull it out of the concealable carrier. So what you'll end up with, worst case scenario, is your armor panel, the concealable carrier that it sits in, and your external carrier with all of your pouches still attached to it or whatever you happen to have. But you want anything with Velcro, the Velcro off, anything with zippers, the zippers closed, and you want to make sure that all of your armor is out of the carrier. This can be a little more difficult than some people think. Most armor is pretty hard and heavy or large where you're gonna see it. What I've seen a lot of people accidentally do is they would have soft trauma plates and they forget the soft trauma plates are in the front of their concealable carrier and they end up washing the armor with these in it. That's a no-no. You don't wanna ever throw something like this, any type of soft armor or hard armor in a washing machine. You take all your armor, so your trauma plates, your rifle plates, whatever else, your soft armor, you set it to the side. You take your carrier, and then if you have another carrier, a concealable carrier inside of it, take all of that, make sure all the Velcro is taken off, all the zippers are closed, you throw it in the washing machine, and what I tend to do is throw it in there with uh, uniform pants, because uniform pants, my uniform pants are dark blue, these are all either dark blue or black, and so you don't get a lot of bleed over, you don't get a lot of pilling. If you throw your carriers in with towels, especially white towels, you're going to get little bits of white towel stuck all over and lint all over your carrier. So make sure you, you color match uh, what you're throwing in there with it. So it's a good time when you're doing your uniforms, if you've got all the sticky side Velcro off of it, throw it all in at once. I just use a mild detergent, the same stuff I use with my uniforms. I throw it in there, I turn the machine on, just a normal wash cycle like I do with my uniform pants, and it comes out clean and not stinking anymore. And then you reverse the process to put it all back together again the way you had it before. Make sure you inspect when you pull it all out to make sure that all of the pouches are still attached properly. While I haven't run across a pouch yet that would fall apart from being washed, some of them, the snaps or hooks and loops will come disconnected. So make sure everything's connected together and everything's tensioned properly after you put it all together. Make sure you, you try it on before you're ready to go to work. Make sure everything's floating properly on your vest cover, but that's basically how you do it. Finally, take your Velcro, Stick it all back on, and because your Velcro is off, you don't have any ripped holes in your pants or polo shirts or whatever else you're putting in there with it, and then you're good to go. Your stuff doesn't stink anymore. Now, if you don't have time to do all of that, and you just need to make it to the end of the week, let's say you're working a four-day work week, and on your third day, it's really smelly, but you're working a double, and you gotta come back to work the next day. Your best methodology to make it stink less, to make it more tolerable, in the future is to take your armor and to lay it out flat with the inside facing up in, in a dry room, a dry, well-ventilated room, preferably one that you're not sleeping in and where no one's gonna smell the stinky armor in the room. It's a good time to just put it on the workbench in the garage. Uh, I've even seen guys that just lay this out in the trunk of their car, if they park it in a garage, you know, out of direct sunlight, so you're not gonna melt anything, leaving the armor, uh, you're not supposed to leave the armor in the trunk of a car, but people do it, and it'll dry the panels out without having to disassemble everything. Uh, if you're worried about doing something like that, and the armor having some sort of negative effects on the armor because you left it in the trunk of a car, you can always unvelcro these, pull the armor out of the panels, and just leave your carrier, and then slide the armor back in so that you, you ventilate the armor out. I found that that's actually fairly effective. 
uh, even just leaving it laid out on the workbench in my garage for about an hour reduces this thing significantly until I can get to washing it. This whole process, including the washing machine, should take less than an hour. It's not really a big deal. I know back in the day guys used to make a huge, huge deal about having to take all of the pouches off of vests and washing the carrier separately and having to wipe down the armor. Frankly, the armor that's in the vest, I, I give it the smell test. Most of the time, it doesn't even smell. There's no reason to have to wash the soft armor. I tend to get to this problem before it gets to that point. If it does smell a little bit, taking a wet paper towel and just wiping it tends to get most of it away because most modern armor, the, it's sealed up in this like little bag material. And this stuff's fairly water resistant, which means that any sweat that touches it isn't really gonna soak through, it's just gonna be sitting on the surface. So just a, a wet paper towel or a wet rag tends to clean it off fairly easily. So that is cleaning sweaty, nasty, stinky body armor. I'm gonna take some comments from the Instagram live stream audience. If you wanna be part of the conversation, head, head over and follow me over on Instagram, Tommy underscore free field training. Until next week, you guys be safe and take care of each other. Hey, thanks for watching Free Field Training on YouTube. And while you're here, why don't you check out some of these other goofy videos that I've made. Or you could subscribe or maybe go over to Patreon and see how you get your name put on the videos like these fine folks over here. All the links are, of course, down in the description. We'll see you guys next time.